I, I read this story this week about a pilot. He, he, he was in a, a just a, a, a one-person plane, and he took off, and he got to his flying altitude, and he heard gnawing. And he knew that sometime before he had taken off, a rat had got aboard his plane. And the gnawing just kept going and going and going. It was getting louder and louder. And he began to worry. What if this rat gnaws through a vital cable? What if this rat goes through my fuel line? What if this rat this? What if this rat that? And he didn't know what to do. He was scared. He was not the place where he could land. He was still two hours away from any place where he could land. And this rat continued to knock. And I think probably the sound of the rat gnawing got louder the harder he worried. As he, as he flew this plane. And he decided to pray. Oh Lord, there's a rat on this plane. I can't land, and it's going to chew through something vital, and I'm going to crash. God, if you don't do something, if you don't help me, God. And he said, suddenly, the thought came into his head, rise in elevation. Because you see, rats are made to live at ground level or below ground level, but not at altitude. So he began to climb slowly. A thousand feet at a time, he went up, he went up. The gnawing got danger and danger. Finally, he got up to about 20,000 feet, a little above that, and the gnawing stopped. The rat died from the altitude. And then he went on, he landed, he was safe, and sure enough, when he went through his airplane, he found a dead rat. Um, do you worry? Yes. Huh? Let me see how many liars we have in here. Who does not worry? Okay, there are no liars in the congregation today. We do worry, don't we? All of us have worries. Max Lucado says that we pack them up in our suitcase and we carry them with us all day long. And the only time that we're not worrying is when we set them down and then we go to bed because they're so close to our bed they run through our minds at night and keep us from sleeping. Doesn't sound like a very healthy way to live, does it? Martin Luther is the one that said, pray and let God worry. Because we know God doesn't worry, right? What does God have to worry about? Whether or not we're going to change our hearts and our lives to follow God maybe. But Jesus tells us not to worry as well, right? So Peter tells us today what we can do. First Peter tells us what we can do so that we don't worry. The first thing he said is to humble yourselves before God. Now how does humbling myself before God mean that I won't worry? To humble yourselves before God. Well, it's real simple. It's to say to God, I'm flying, there's a rat chewing on my cables, Lord, and I can't do anything about it. <clears throat> it takes a lot of humility to finally admit, I can't do anything about it. I can't manipulate the situation. I can't buy a fix at Walmart or off the TV. I can't call in an expert from one of these sites that are off. You know, you can get plumbers, you can get electricians and carpenters, you can get all. But sometimes there ain't no fix for the worry that you can do. And Peter says, when you get to that kind of worry, humble yourselves. Admit it. Otherwise, you're not going to sleep. What can I do? 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 And you know that when we worry and we can't find a cause for it, but we don't humble ourselves, you know what kind of people we become, right? 
We become people who are short and snappy. It's like, Chuck, I've got problems. Don't get near me. Can't you see I'm worried right? You know what it does to your face, right? So it doesn't make us very beautiful either. Humble yourselves and give it to God. When there's nothing you can do, when there's nothing anyone can do for you, humble yourselves and give it to God. Because First Peter would say, if you don't humble yourself before God, if you can't say it's out of control, what you're saying is that worry is your God. That worry becomes your God. Who are you paying attention to? Your worry or to the God who said, take my yoke upon yourself. Because my burdens are easy, light. In other words, worry becomes the God. We start thinking about it. It shapes what we say. It shapes what we do. It shapes how we react. And Peter said, the first step to handling worry is just to say before God, I can't do it. It's out of my hands. It's out of my control, God. And God will say, well, of course it is, Lord. Of course it is. Let me handle it. In this church, we talk a lot about laying our worries at the foot of the cross. Nailing them to the tree, so to speak. Crucifying them with the one who can handle it. Amen? Humble yourselves before God. Admit. Just admit. I can't handle my shoulders up. This coat is a 40 regular. And 40 regular isn't big enough to carry all the way to the world of you know? Now Ken, <coughs> he's an ex-Marine. His shoulders are wider than <coughs> mine. But you know what? Ken's shoulders aren't big enough to carry the worry of the world. Only Jesus' shoulders are wide enough. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened with heavy things, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. I will give you rest. Come to me. That's the second point that, uh, that uh, Peter has to make. Uh, not only that we should humble ourselves, but that we should give God our worries. Jesus said, I will give you rest. And by that, Jesus said, I will give you peace. My peace I leave with you, not as the world leads to, I give to you. My peace, a peace that passes understanding. Can you imagine standing in the midst of your worry and not being worried? To be at peace? I don't know how I'm going to get through this valley, but I know who's going to go through it with me. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know how uh, I'm going to get the medicine that I need to take. Anybody with a chronic illness, you know how expensive some of those things are. And, and you wonder, how am I going to get the treatment? What am I, I don't understand how the situation is going to resolve it, but I know who's standing in it with me. I know who said he would never abandon me. Matthew 28, for lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Not just when times are good, Jesus says, but when you have worries. When times aren't so good. When you are standing in need of healing, when you are standing in need of assistance that must come from beyond yourself. First Peter says, give it to God. Humble yourselves and admit you can't handle it, and then give it to God. Give your worries to God, Peter says. Give your anxiety to God and know that peace. Know that peace that God has for us. Do you know what's going to happen to your life even when you get out of church today? I don't want you to get you worried in the pews, but you don't know. None of us know. In the words of, of um, Charles Stanley, our eternity is the next breath away. Sobering thought, isn't it? The very next breath we take Maybe the beginning of our eternity. And the question is, are you going to worry yourself right up to the gates of heaven? 
And then probably sit there and worry about if you're going to get in. Amen? But we're saved by grace. It's a done deal. It's assured. Now the one who assures our salvation can give us that peace. Don't you think that the same Savior would give us peace in the rest of our lives? In the things that plague us? In the things that rob life from us? We can know peace. Come to me. You that are weary and carrying a heavy load, a heavy burden, and I will give you peace. How about to walk through life with confidence? Without thinking you have to duck every other breath. Because I think there are people that get up and go, Oh Lord, what's going to happen to me today? Oh my. I've got to get on that busy highway and my boss sent me a memo that he, she wants to see me and what did I do wrong? And I'm probably going to come home unemployed and we build up all these scenarios in our minds. You get up, you successfully travel the highway, you get to work, and the boss gives you a raise. And you worry that whole time. Worry will steal your life. It will rob your life from you. It will steal your joy. It will steal your happiness. It will steal the living of your days. That's why Vicki gave me that little plaque that says one day at a time and put it on my desk. Because she, I don't know if you know what Rolschen is another German word for worry. That's my last name. That's another, I used to be terrible at it. Vicki, in 30 years, I can't tell you what she's done to help me to understand that we live in the moment. We live in the presence of God that we live in the moment. Um, so I have this plaque that says, one day at a time, one day at a time. And even not even one day at a time. This moment, live in this moment with God. Let God give you life in this moment. And don't let worry steal it from you. Don't let it take your peace. Don't let it take your joy. Don't let it take your happiness. Just confess. I can't carry it. I can't. But I can give it to God who can. Amen? I can give my word to God. I can, I can lay it at the foot of the cross and Jesus will take it there. Um, and then the last thing he says is to be diligent. Be awake. Watch your life. Be aware of the way you're walking because it always creeps in. Just about the time you think you gave this worry to God, another one may come along. And Peter is saying, you always have to walk and be aware of what's replacing God in your life. What it is is taking God's place in each one of your footsteps. And make sure that worry isn't one of them. So really, it's getting in the habit of every time that we, that we have a worry, of going to God first. Amen? When we have a worry, it's not checking to see if I have enough money in the bank account to handle the worry. It's not saying if my next door neighbor loves me enough to carry me through the worry. It's going to God first and saying, God, this issue has presented itself in my life and I'm giving it to you now and I'm going to walk in faith and together, God, you and I are going to have this worry together and we're going to solve it together. Amen? I think God is infinitely more talented about handling my life than what I am. I'm pretty sure that's true. I can't tell you how many times in 61 years I've shot myself in the foot. Or stuck this big, I can't believe that this size 10 foot with a wingtip on it could fit in my mouth. <laughs> huh? And yet I pulled that foot out of my mouth, I, I've had it. I have a foot healing from shooting myself in the foot. I've said the wrong things. I've done the wrong things. I've acted impulsively without planning. I've planned so much that I've squeezed the life out of whatever event it was. You ever do that on a vacation? You know when you're going on a vacation and you've got every mile of the road planned? 
I mean everything. From driving down the highway, the wife's in the seat next to me going, Gary, look at that. Gary, look at that. Can't drive it. Got to get ahead. Got to get ahead. We have to be to this place in five minutes or we'll be behind schedule. We worry. You know what I'm talking about. I can tell you have a knowing look on your face. We even worry our vacations. Don't we? One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to take such a footloose and fancy free vacation that I want to have time to see that gigantic ball of twine. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It's nothing to say. Do you think it stinks? Oh, the, the ball of twine smell? Well, if you've been sitting around as long as it is. I want to, do you understand what I mean by saying this? I, the, to get off the highway, how many of you stop at those historic mile markers or just go right by them, right? You know, yeah, don't have time, don't have time. Don't have, we got to be where we got to be. There's no time for fun until we get where we're going. <laughs> get off, get off now, right? We even worry our leisure time to where there's no leisure time. Worry replaces God in our lives. Our problems replace God in our lives. We end up serving and speaking to and living out that which God could easily handle if we would lay the foot of the cross, if we would trust God. Now, I give this worry sermon about every other year. I asked the Sunday school teacher, <clears throat> I said, the Sunday school class uh, earlier today, and I'll ask you right now, what is it that you were worried about at 10.50 a.m. on the 23rd of September last year? Last year. And you're still here. Amen. We're all still here. 90% of us, unless we had something major going on, we can't remember what we were worried about last year on this Sunday. Can we? It was consuming at the time, but... You remember Mad Magazine when you were growing up? Do you remember Alfred E. Newman? Yeah. He had a phrase. What? Me worry? Maybe it's a phrase that we as Christians should have. I have a living God. I have a Savior who died to redeem me, to redeem my life. I have the grace of God that is freely given with me and goes with me into every circumstance of every day. I have the word of God to inform me when times get a little rough and I can always speak to my God in prayer. What? Me worrying? 